wallet application layer here, like MetaMask. But in my analysis, in long term, you know, MetaMask also move into this space. That's the things I want you to understand here. I'm Mr. Masa. So today's the investment review for the MetaMask. Token code is Matter. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my portfolio strategy. So I only recommend assets to the Bitcoin and the older token which is related to these six categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my portfolio strategy, please check out my other video about my portfolio strategy. Okay. And then today's MetaMask is matching category or here. Number three, number four, and then number one here. The MetaMask is a wallet app. So mainly they are matching category here. Number one, dApps, especially B2C side. Since they are so seriously focused on a DeFi space. So another seven matching category, I put it here. Number three, collateralized DeFi. And then number four, token DEX. Yep. And also currently MetaMask has not issued their token yet. But why I think MetaMask is planning to issue their token is here. Once you're going to download it, their you know, iPhone or Android application of the MetaMask, smartphone applications, you can see the MetaMask token code here, which means that it's pretty clear that in the near future, they're going to issue the Meta tokens to user side. Okay. So just like in Uniswap, you know, starting for the MetaMask, you know, before they're issuing their token, it's kind of better to think about it for us to use the MetaMask in advance before they issue their tokens. Okay. And as usual, I'm going to apply the six analytical points. So standing for the pain points, products, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here. So the total score is 30 points. 3-0. Okay. So let's start from number one, pain point analysis. And then before moving into the detail of the pain point analysis, which led to MetaMask, I want you to ask you to think about, you know, Chasm Theory based Kira application on the blockchain space. Because, you know, here's a great analogy from the internet. As you know, the Google, Facebook, Amazon, those are the amazing Kira applications on the internet industry, right? From the, you know, stock investment perspective, those three company is a huge success. Why, you know, those three player is so successful, you know, internet and companies investment, which is also related to the chasm theory. And then let me briefly introduce the basic idea of the chasm theory. And the chasm theory is one of the most well advanced and well known marketing theory, especially for the new technology for its mass adaptations. And then they have mainly five user categories, starting from the innovator, early adapter, and here is a chasm, and then early majority, Late majority and late mass. Every single new technology experiences these directions for its mass adaptations. Google, Facebook, Amazon, all the time starting from here. Then crystal the chasm. You know, as we know that you know every single internet user usually uses these products, right? So which means that you know, this technology itself is adapted by these later phase user base, such as early majority, late majority, late mass after the crossing chasm. And when you think about the blockchain space, of course, in long term, we're going to have the Kira application blockchain space, which means that, you know, we're going to have Google in a blockchain or Facebook in a blockchain or Amazon in a blockchain. Every single of those Kira application blockchain space also crossing chasm like this way. From this point, B2C applications is one of the key elements which is going to be so successful in the blockchain space, like Google and Facebook stuff. And which cloud applications will be like that, you know, massive success in the blockchain space. That's the primary things I want you to think about it when you analyze the B2C applications. Okay. And then pain point number one, critical needs for asset allocation optimization on the lending marketplace. So here are the things. Aggregator solution will make retail investor more frictionless for their asset allocation optimization to maximize their investment return. So this is the first website view of the Abe, one of the major decentralized lending platform. And then currently they're going to list it around 30 crypto assets for their lending services. And Abe, just like a decentralized banking solutions. So every single user in Abe 
can choose how you're going to allocate your crypto asset here to the borrower who need the money. That's like a decentralized banking system stuff. Here's also preset annual interest rates you can get by lending your DAI or ETH to the other borrower side here. But every single of those risk management for the random business stuff have to be taken by your responsibility, not others. So it must be kind of tough work that you're going to manage, you know, how you're going to allocate your assets to other borrower side too. And most importantly, NFT token, like, you know, gaming virtual goods or digital or something, which is one of the you know, next key growth driver on the crypto space. You have to manage those, you know, virtual game goods or digital art stuff on an NFT based one by yourself. Once you're going to decide to use a decentral random platform. From this perspective, if the aggregator, they're going to help you out every single of those optimization issue to maximize the you know, investment return. It's really, really frictionless, right? So that's the critical pain points that an aggregator, including DeFi world applications, have to solve it, right? And in pain point number two, lower impermanent loss risk on a DEX for your liquidity mining, okay? So firstly, the things I want you to understand about the liquidity mining, why? Because this is a great investment opportunity for every single retail investor in crypto space. One of the key success factors of the DEX system is they're going to attract a lot of retail investors' crypto assets into the DEX system. They're going to use those assets as a liquidity for their other investor or trader in a DEX system. So for example, like you have ETH, here the Uniswap major DEX system, and then once you're going to you know, allocate this ETH into the Uniswap, which means that you're going to join liquidity mining, monthly basis, you can get the annual interest return by providing liquidity to the market, okay? So if you're not going to sell these ETH for long term, you can make money. So this is really, very really beneficial for you. But here are the pretty important potential risks that you have to understand with the joining liquidity mining is this one, impermanent loss risk. And let me tell you the detail here. So DEX system, like Uniswap, take the very unique pricing mechanism. Actually, they're going to take the pool balance pricing mechanism, unlike central exchange, such as Binance. Binance or Coinbase take the centralized pricing model, so that is why order book system is a major solution. But once we're going to take the order book system, which is not a decentralized one, so it's not a scalable in a decentralized fashion on the blockchain. But instead, Uniswap take the decentralized model in a pricing mechanism. Because of this, once you're going to join the liquidity pool in Uniswap to make money, you have to get the additional potential risk, and then which is they call the impermanent loss risk. I'm not going to tell you the detail about this kind of potential risk because you have to have a certain level of the mathematical skill to understand this point. But from their white paper, they're going to briefly tell you about impermanent loss risk. So here are the things. Let's say once, once you're going to use the ETH tokens for a long-term hold and you decided to join a Uniswap as a liquidity provider, then with this in a starting point, after this, once the ETH price is 1.25x price change, result in an additional 0.6% loss compared with just holding ETH token on your wallet. And if the price hits five times price change, result in a 25.5% additional loss compared with just holding ETH tokens. It's a really, really frustrating stuff. And the most important items you have to understand is this one. This risk does exist in both directions, bull side or bear side. So it doesn't matter the price goes up or goes down, you have to take this additional risk. So if the prices goes up, you'd be happy, but you have to additionally lose these money by you know get the investment return for the liquidity pool. And if the price is negative side, it's a huge problem. Not about the pricing is go down, but also you have to receive the additional risk here, plus 25.5%. It's a ridiculous, right? So that is why currently, you know, when you look at the DEX market, 
like you know stable coin pair such as DAI, USDT, those kind of pretty popular one because you know the impermanent loss risk because of pricing mechanism stuff is much lower because you know price volatility in a stable coin market must be lower than 1.25x, right? So that's why. But the key thing that I want you to understand here is if the aggregator such as DeFi wallet can solve this issue, it's really really frictionless for the every single type of little investor in the crypto space for crossing chasm stuff, right? Based on this understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. And then before I move into the detail, let's check out the history overview of the MetaMask. So this worth applications funded by Daniel Finley and Aaron Davis as a subsidiary of the consensus in 2016 in New York City. They started as a browser extension wallet app. And on September 2020, they released the mobile wallet app for iOS and Android. And on October 2020, they launched DEX aggregation products on including token swapping features. So as you can see, MetaMask only function as the mediocre you know, word applications, they are moving to the DeFi business space. And here's a system overview of the MetaMask. As I described here, here's a you know, major DeFi project such as Dex Uniswap, Zerex, also you know, decentralized lending platforms such as Compound Abe. Here's a DeFi aggregator space. And the currently major player here is Wi-Fi, RAN, and OneInch. Here's a retail investors, you know, pretty active space such as MetaMask, Square Cash, PayPal, and Trust Wallet. And then what I'm thinking here is currently, you know, those DeFi aggregator connect their solution in wallet application layer here, like MetaMask. But in my analysis, in long term, you know, MetaMask also move into this space. That's the things I want you to understand here. Because here is one of the critical killer solution layer in a blockchain space as I described in the previous slide, right? Then, you know, here is a clear evidence, MetaMask token swapping here. So they already aggregated those, you know, DEX project for the user side to maximize the return opportunity for the retail investor. Pretty great competition is happening in this market right now. And as usual, the value cow profession analysis. So here's the MetaMask and their direct competitor Trust Wallet here and a DeFi aggregator Wi-Fi and wine here, okay? And the first things I want you to understand is this one, lower impermanent risk and a WBTC. Because as I told you that MetaMask already launched their, you know, atomic swap cross-chain trade business stuff. But from, you know, retail investor perspective, the things they have to achieve is these elements. Especially if the MetaMask already get into deck swapping business stuff, you know, lower impermanent loss risk management is a very critical element. But compared with, you know, Wi-Fi or one inch, those issues are a little bit behind. So they have to immediately take that issue too. And the other item also I want you to pay attention to this one, WBTC. Because WBTC, you know, wrapped Bitcoin market, it's pretty big potential in a DeFi space. And about detailed stuff, let me tell you later, okay? And then one of the cutting edge point of the MetaMask from you know, those kind of consumer facing application business stuff is of course this layer, easy to use. Because in you know, MetaMask, standing from the B2C application space, so their team now that is seriously focused on B2C application, easy to use in product development stuff, their product itself is much more polished compared with those kind of other competitors here like Wi-Fi and one inch okay? So one of the key competitive driver for the MetaMask is how the MetaMask can leverage about their product assets such as easy to use user experiences to those DeFi business opportunity here. And in a final item I want to pay attention to is this one, governance DAO. Since you know, MetaMask, as I told you that is subsidiary of this consensus, which is actually pretty big organizations. So from the DAO development perspective, you know, smaller organization, fully decentralized organizations such as Wi-Fi, is you know, much more advanced. How they you know MetaMask competing with those kind of DAO developing competitions with the Wi-Fi with another key growth driver in their long-term business development stuff. Okay? And then as a next step, let me tell you about more detail about the WVTC. 
So why I think, you know, WBTC is so critical in the DeFi space is about, you know, chasm theory, as I told you that in a previous slide. Because think about this, which crypto asset is the most major assets for every single crypto investor? They're going to hold at least the amount of crypto assets must be Bitcoin, right? Not about the retail investor, but also the institutional investor too. Long-term market potential DeFi space, it's not only for the innovator early adopter, but also like in those major user base in Chasm Theory too. So wrapped BTC business stuff has a huge potential. So from this perspective to me, you know, which DeFi aggregator can take the major market share of the WBTC it will be the kind of key issue to identify who will be the successful DeFi aggregator in this space. One more thing about product analysis I want you to tell you here is this one. DeFi aggregator will be the Google on a blockchain. And then let me tell you why. Then as we know that the Google is a leading internet industry player here. Their market cap size as of now is $919 billion. It's huge success. And then let me think about that. Why Google is so important player in the internet industry. And here's the analogy from the internet. So first of all, TV was a major media format before the internet, right? Then in a TV, there is a hurting mechanism by the mutual exploitation player, such as artist productions, TV channel, and advertisers. So every single artist who wants to create the content and distribute the user side, they have to deal with those mutual exploitation player, which is really very frustrating. But internet made a decentralized this media format in this way. The internet world, there is no mutual exploitation player anymore. So let's say, you know, look at, you know, blog media or picture media or movie media. No one stop you to create the contents and distribute the contents. How they are defined the popularity of the each contents also managed by user too. Just like, you know, like buttons or share buttons or hashtag, those are kind of amplifier to help that each artist or user can get the popularity of their contents from the other audience side here. Google was standing from the text media search. You know, Instagram is so successful at the picture media and YouTube, also the Google company, is also successful in the movie media too. Completely same things would happen in a financial space by blockchain technology. That's the things I want you to understand here. So which means, here's a picture who's going to compare the old system and a new system in a post-capitalism with the blockchain technology. So in an old system, those users who have extra money, usually they're deposited extra money to the banking system. But here's the other user side here who need additional money for buying a car or buying a house or you know, starting a new business or something. But you have no rights to distribute those assets to the other user side. Instead, here's the mutual exploitation player, such as banker, venture capitalists, and the credit score companies. So blockchain technology, they're gonna eliminate those mutual exploitation player. Then instead, we're gonna build a user-driven, more democratic financial system like this way. Just like an internet system. So which means that we have huge opportunity for current application business staff in here. The here is a great energy what we can learn from Google. Because Google made internet searchable for everyone on a text-based contents. You know, then their key mission is, you know, help user access to the variable information efficiently. Here's an analogy on the DeFi space. So DeFi aggregator simply say, make crypto assets honorable for everyone. Currently, the DeFi ecosystem, it's so complicated. So DeFi aggregator help user minimize the risk and maximize the return with their technology. That idea itself, just like in a Google search engine algorithm, so Google made a keyword search algorithm in a centralized fashion for internet contents, mainly text one by page rank algorithm. So they're going to develop the weighting mechanism of which contents will be trustful or not. Then once take an example of the, you know, young finance products, here's a great analogy here. Why are made the yield farming and liquidity mining strategy in a decentralized fashion? So Google take the centralized approach, but the young finance take the decentralized approach for the strategy developments. And here's a good example with the YEs, one of the Y-board products. 
And then for example, you have ETH on your wallet and then deposit your ETH on a YETH vault here. This product automatically allocate this asset to the DAI on a MakerDAO with 200% collateralization rate of the ETH. So they're gonna borrow some DAI for you. And these DAI, they're gonna move to Carb Finance to join the liquidity pool on a DAI pool on Carb Finance DIC system. This is a liquidity mining pool, that is why you can receive the incentives by CRB tokens. Then once you're gonna get these CRB tokens, you know, these products sell CRB on the DEX, such as Uniswap or something. And then you gotta pay this successful fee for this strategy creator in a decentralized manner, get the return by ETH. Strategy creator develop these various type of asset optimization instead of you, and it makes money for you. Then they're gonna take successful fee. You can see some kind of analogy here. That is why, to me, the DeFi aggregation space is a huge potential, you know, killer application here on the blockchain space. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? And then number three, team analysis. So here are the two key members, Daniel Finley, founder and creator, and he's a software developer at the Consensus, and he's an ex-software developer at Apple. And the second co-founder, Aaron, but I couldn't find any information about him. Then from the DAO perspective, MetaMask also plus over 100 members in a Consensus. And here's additional things you, know, you should understand here, because the Consensus is funded by Joseph Rubin, and his primary motivation to fund this company, Consensus, is to develop that Ethereum ecosystem. So think about the future market development in the blockchain space. My prediction is other blockchain platform, not only about the Tron and EOS, but a lot of DeFi projects currently pretty active in Ethereum, maybe graduated from Ethereum and they're gonna develop their own blockchain network. So from this perspective, the key things you have to understand about the scalability of the MetaMask product is whether MetaMask to expand their product portfolio, not only about the DeFi project in you know, the Ethereum space, but also other blockchain project. Okay? And execution power analysis. So this is a DeFi worth ranking from you know Nominix. And then they're gonna take the reputation score. It's kind of social networking presence by analyzing Twitter or Facebook, that kind of stuff. And currently MetaMask is the number one player here. And then their direct competitor trust what's here. From the execution power perspective, MetaMask is great potential, okay? And then number five, token economy analysis. And this is a token economy design matrix which I made, and since they are the B2C player, so matching here, DAPS category. And as a subcategory, Crotteras DeFi, DEX also matching category too. Here's the network effect on a meta token here. The starting point is this one. Crypto asset holder who are interested in yield farming, liquidity mining, but prefer a lower risk bet, they're gonna allocate their crypto asset into the MetaMask. Then this provide more incentive opportunity for creators who are gonna develop the new strategy for the MetaMask asset allocations. This is a key growth driver to develop the ecosystem. Once lots of you know, creator who can successfully develop the better performance than direct yield farming or liquidity mining, which is gonna achieve the better customer experiences. So that is why asset pool growth will be happening here on this you know, network effect model here. And which also generate another second growth model here is you know, active user growth. With the asset pool growth, they can attract more you know, selection of the Arcoin NFT, and which is provide more investment opportunity for the retail investor, you know, because a lot of you know, creator can develop the other variety of the you know, strategy to maximize return, DeFi aggregation business stuff, so they can develop more active user growth, which also provide more better customer experiences. So these two growth engine is a primary growth mechanism for the meta tokens, okay? And then governance DAO, a bit unclear for me because Young Finance is developing a very active and scalable DAO but since MetaMask is owned by Consensus, which is pretty big organizations, so it's a little bit unclear whether they can develop the effective DAO mechanism or not, okay? And then number six, hype cycle analysis. And as usual, got the hype cycle analysis, blockchain business 2019 version, and the matching category on the MetaMask is here. Smart assets, it's a key business for the DeFi aggregator.
and then down here. Both are kind of a little bit, you know, challenge for them. But about smart and asset business staff, I see some potential there. About DAO staff, it's a little bit unclear because of the, they are a subsidiary of the consensus. Okay. And then final item, comprehensive evaluations. About pain points, I set a 5.0 here because without any questions, DeFi aggregation business staff is a critical business layer to develop the care application in the blockchain space. Okay. And the product, I set a 4.0 here, you know, because MetaMask is a pretty good word applications for the DeFi aggregation business staff. Still, they are challenging right now. So 4.0. About team level, it's a kind of same things. About word application business, it's pretty good, but the DeFi space, a little bit unclear. It's still challenging. Uh, also, the DAO potential, it's a little bit unclear. So I set 4.0. And execution power, I set a 4.5 here because they're already the most successful DeFi wallet on the blockchain space. So this is great. And the token economy, 4.0 here, it's the kind of same things about the products because they are still challenging on a DeFi aggregation business stuff. That's why. Okay. And the hype cycle, well, kind of same things too because, you know, about the smart asset business, it just, they started. Also, you know, DAO perspective is still a little bit unclear compared with their indirect competitor Wi-Fi. So I set the 4.0 here. So the total score is 25.5. My minimum investment criteria is 25 points. So from this perspective, I can recommend investment in meta tokens. So that is all this time. I also make a lot of interesting videos on the crypto and the blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.